2024 is already shaping up to be a very interesting year for Wayland. Budgie is making some absolutely wild claims about when they're going to start supporting Wayland. Fedora Workstation is going to stop shipping Xorg by default. Fedora KDE doesn't even want to support Xorg full stop. And whilst Plasma 6 is a little bit rough around the edges, it's certainly a really good starting point. But today I want to talk about a smaller desktop environment, one that you've probably heard of here and there, that being LXQT. The name being similar to another project isn't just a coincidence, originally LXQT wasn't its own desktop. Originally, it was a part of the LXDE project as a QT version of the GTK LXDE, at the time being called LXDE-QT. Eventually, it merged with the Razer QT project and then became what it is today. Fun fact, the original author of LXDE also goes by the name PC Man, which you might recognize if you make use of the PC Man FM file manager. That is where the application came from. Just the other day, LXQT put out this tweet. The desktop of LXQT is now 100% Wayland ready, to which Pharonix and a bunch of other outlets wrote, LXQT desktop now 100% ready for Wayland. The lightweight LXQT desktop environment is fully ready to take on the Wayland world. The LXQT project tweeted that their desktop is now 100% Wayland ready. Now, that's not entirely correct, and they actually ended up posting a tweet follow-up to this. There was some misunderstanding. We apologize. The desktop of LXQT is not the LXQT desktop environment, but just the desktop. This is referring to specifically the desktop component. It's not like the entire desktop environment is Wayland ready. That doesn't mean the great progress isn't being made though. What actually happened is a change to PCMan FM QT. Use Layer Shell QT for desktop under Wayland. Previously, workarounds provided by some Wayland compositors like LabWC were needed for having a usable desktop under Wayland. With this simple patch, and thanks to the developers of Layer Shell QT, PCMan FM QT's desktop is completely ready for Wayland. Don't forget to remove probable workarounds before using it. So Layer Shell is used for making things like panels, lock screens, wallpapers, notifications, basically content that should be a part of your desktop that is treated differently from regular application windows which need to have a very specific layer they are going to appear. For example, your wallpaper should always be the bottom layer. There is never a reason for your wallpaper to appear above an application window. Something like a lock screen should always be the top level. If the lock screen is open, everything else is going to be hidden. If you have a notification, that notification should be above your application windows, but also below the lock screen. Now, Layer Shell QT is something that came out of the KDE project. It is the QT version of a WROOTS project called WLR Layer Shell. And if you want to learn how Layer Shells work and everything they do, here is a giant essay from 2018 by Druda Vault explaining everything you need to know. It is out of scope for this video, but I'll leave it linked down below. So what this change was, was very small. On LXDE, LXQT, or anywhere else that you run PCMan FM, it can be used to have desktop icons on your desktop. That's what it was doing. It was making sure that desktop icons would properly work on Wayland by using Layer Shell. Besides just this, back in February there was a blog post titled QT6 and Wayland. The QT6 stuff is basically, we had things written in QT5, QT6 now exists, therefore we are porting things. Let's go to the Wayland section. QT6 library should provide some more tools to continue development. Basically, implement Wayland specific code in components like panel, desktop, runner, shortcuts, and notification daemon. Many applications and LXQT components are already working perfectly on Wayland. Others partially and some not. See the table below for a detailed list. Most applications don't really need any Wayland specific code to be made. If you're writing something like a text editor, that text editor is going to work pretty much the same way 
regardless of what you're doing. And a lot of other simple applications are in the exact same boat. Now, obviously, there are things that are not, like a hotkey daemon and things like that. But, for at least that, you're good. A missing piece is the release of Layer Shell QT 6.0 that is out, and now they are using it. As the actual version can't be used, except to some extent in the notification daemon. The second most missing piece is a task manager plugin in the panel for Wayland. Some steps are on the way in this direction, but long is the way to Wayland, so patience is needed here, and help is always welcome naturally. And it seems like right now they're in the process of refactoring the panel. Now, Something I think is cool about LXQT is unlike most other Wayland desktops, whatever you want to call them, this isn't actually going to be a Wayland compositor. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. The LXQT philosophy to being modular will not change with Wayland. It is supposed to work with all WL Roots based compositors in the same way as users can choose their window manager now. This said, there aren't so many compositors actively developed at the moment, mainly three stacking LabWC, Wayfire, and Kwin Wayland, and two tiled Sway and Hyperland. At the moment, the most satisfying results can be achieved with LabWC. I would add things like River, DWL, and Hikari to this list as well, but I think as a baseline, worrying about these ones is probably a good start. In other words, with something like KDE and GNOME Wayland, if you're using KDE, you are using the KWIN Window Manager. If you're on GNOME, you are using the Mutter Window Manager, because these are kind of intrinsically tied to the way these desktops function. LXQT is acting more like a software suite that you run on top of an existing window manager, much like it would be done on the Xorg side as well, with Awesome or DWM or Sway or anything else you wanted. Now, obviously, this approach more aligns with what they were already doing on the X11 side and makes it a lot easier for people who are moving over to the Wayland side to have a similar sort of experience, but it also comes with a very good side benefit. It is so much easier to build the Wayland support if you don't have to worry about the compositor. Obviously, getting all your applications working is already going to be a challenge. It is already going to take some time. But by far, the biggest component is building the Wayland compositor. And if you don't already have experience building a Wayland compositor, and you weren't going to fork off of something that already exists, like Sway, Hyperland, River, so on and so forth, building that compositor is going to massively slow down the project, and is kind of a big part of the reason why a lot of desktops are just never going to move over to the Wayland side. Doing that compositor work is just not really viable for the vast majority of them, because they just don't even know where to start. And this isn't the only desktop taking this style of approach. Another one being Mate. Now, most people probably don't even realize that Mate has an experimental Wayland session. It is very experimental and very early, but in their case, they are making use of the Wayfire compositor. Wayfire, because it has a lot of fancy effects, things that you would traditionally see in something like Compass. It's kind of the spiritual successor of the Compass project, but instead of being on X11, now it's on Wayland. Honestly, I wish more of these smaller projects would take a look at this approach. I did a whole video on this, but the legacy of Linux is built on mountains upon mountains of forks. You don't have to start something from scratch, even though you're not starting completely from scratch because there is the WL Roots library. You don't just have to start from the library. You can fork off an existing project and build from there. So many of the window managers we have today started as a fork. As it currently stands, this is how much they still say they have left to do. And honestly, assuming this list doesn't suddenly grow really, really long, they don't have that much left. Half the things in experimental slash in progress are related to the layer shell. So that's kind of like one thing. It's just one thing in different locations. And none of these sound that crazy to do. 
So you might be seeing a fully complete LXQT desktop on Wayland within like at least a year or so, it doesn't seem like it's that far away. Obviously, there are really cool things happening in the big desktops as well, but it's always nice to check in on the smaller projects just to see what's really going on there, just see if they're worrying about the Wayland transition, seeing if they're already done, seeing just what sort of work they actually have left to do. And it seems like in this case, they're in a pretty good state. So if you're an LXQT user, well, you can probably just keep using it long into the future, assuming you get used to the composity swap to on the Wayland side, but that's a whole separate problem. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you make use of LXQT? Have you tried it in the past and maybe want to try it out again? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I couldn't think of a funny joke.